Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will start building a contract management system. It's a very simple solution, but it's something that might be useful for most companies or organizations. Of course, to keep track of your contracts, you need some information about those contracts. I've gathered some of those things here. The most important thing, a short description. I'm going to use the title for that. The signing date, of course, is the date when the contract was signed. The counterpart, I'm going to use a lookup column for that, so I'll have a list of the counterparts. Then I'll have the type of contract, that will be a choice column. The responsible counsel, that will be a people picker. Renewal or expiry date, I'm going to use that for automation later. That's going to be in another demo. And then the council comments, I want that to use the append changes to existing text feature, which is usually not available in libraries. So I'll show you how to get around that limitation. So this is the part we'll do in this demo and then in the other demo. Actually, I'll do several demos about the automation part here. And the automation part is, of course, that the responsible council should get an email prompting him or her to review the contract. There are several different ways of doing that in SharePoint in workflows and in flows. So that's what I'm going to show in another demo. But here I'm just going to set up the system. Moving on, I've set up a private group for this. So I'm going to create a library in here. Of course, I could use the documents library, but I prefer to have a special app for each type of you know, specified information. So I'm going to use a document library. I'm going to call that contracts. And then I'm going to create a content type. That's always a good idea to do that, to specify the information. So I'm going to go into the site information and click at the bottom here, view all site settings. And there we have the site content type. So I'm going to create a new content type. Create. I'm going to call that Contoso Contract. And that, of course, is going to inherit from the built-in document content type, which is called document. And I'm going to place that in a new group, which I'm going to call Contoso. Then I'm going to create all those columns inside this content type. So let's put these side by side so I remember everything that I need to do. First of all, the title is going to be the short description. I'm not going to rename that here because then it gets renamed everywhere. Instead, I'm going to do that in the list later. Then I'm going to create new site columns for the signing date. That's going to be a date. And we might default that to today's date because that's hopefully when we enter the contract into the system. So and then we add the counterpart. Let's create a new app for that. This, so I'm going to add an app for containing the counterpart. So that's going to be a custom list. Right, so then I can just enter a few counterparts here that we will sign contract with. Go into quick edit mode. I'll just put, put in some Swedish companies here. And I'll use as example counterparts that we'll have contracts with. Exit quick search. And then I'll pop up back into site information and site settings and continue my setup of the content type. So I'll find my way back to the site content type and find the Contoso group. And there's the Contoso contract. So we've had the signing date. And then I'm going to add a new site column for the counterpart. And that's going to be a lookup information already on the site. It should be in the group. I forgot that last time, didn't I? Put a new group there, Contoso. There we go. And it's going to pick from the list counterparts. So then we're going to add the new column for type of contract. And that's, of course, going to be a choice column. We are not allowed to use the word just type there, so type of contract would be better. And I'm going to give the choice there. And it's going to be in the existing group, Contoso columns. And then the choices are going to be these ones. So here I'm I could just type these in, but I want them in alphabetical order, so I'll show you how to quickly get a comma separated a list of items into alphabetical order. 
and I'll do Excel for that. So I'll just start with a blank workbook, paste this in here, and then I'm going to go into the data tab and do text to columns and split those up. Those are delimited um, by, via a comma sign and then finish that. And then I'm going to copy all of these items and then I'm going to paste them using the transpose operation. Then I have them there like that and then I'm going to sort them and then I have them in alphabetical order. Ah, another thing, I actually got an extra space there in the beginning. Of course, I don't want that. So I'm just going to do use the trim function to get rid of the extra text. And then we'll have them right without any extra text. Fill that down. And all those are cleaned. Wonderful. So those are my choices. And I'm in alphabetical order. And I'm not going to have a default choice. So I'm going to remove that. We don't need Excel for now. Put that down. Continuing, we have responsible council, so I'll add that. That's going to be a personal group. Nothing, no extra changes there. And then it's going to be the renewal or expiry date. And that's going to be a date also. I keep forgetting to put my columns into the right group. That's always a good idea to do. Keeping it clean to not mix up my columns with the built-in Microsoft ones. So uh, I'm going to have to change that. For this next column, I, for the council comments, I want it to be like a chat history so that we can see what each council comment was. To do that, I'm going to create a multi-line text field, of course. And then we're going to scroll down and make sure we do this. Append changes to existing text. That is a rather nice feature that gives me that chat or log looking feature, which is good. And then I'm going to remember to put it in the Contoso group, right? So there we have my content type. We've defined what a Contoso contract consists of contains of all of these columns. So now I'm just going to associate the content type that I created with the document library. But before I do that, I'm going to edit the links here to put things in the right place so that these are connected. That looks nice. All right. So then we go into the contract. I can maximize that window now. And then I'm going to go into library settings. I'm going to advanced settings so that I allow management of content types. As you see, the default content type is document, but I want to add from existing site content types. And here I benefit from using that group. So I'm going to use the Contoso contract, of course. And then I'm going to remove the document content type so that we only allow documents in here. I'm going to delete this content type. So that's it. Then we're done with our document library, our content type. The only thing that remains actually is modifying the view so that we have um, all the right columns there because uh, as you see, they are not visible now, all the nice columns that I created. So I'm just going to click in those. I want the um, not the council comments. I don't want that in there. I want the counterpart. I want the um, signing date. Of course, I want that. I want the renewal date, renewal or expiry dates, and the type of contract. Those are the most important things that I want there. All right. That concludes this demo on how to set up a contract management system. So this part is done. Thank you for watching this demonstration.